Um, so next up, uh, David Chen from OS Nexus is going to be talking about um, yet another change to the ARC, as well as kind of the entire rest of ZFS um, in the form of discontiguous caching uh, with the ABD. And then uh, I'm going to jump in at the end and talk about how this applies to Illumos. OK. Uh, OK, thank you, Matt. Uh, so uh, hello, my name is uh, Chun Wei, or you can call me David. So I mostly work on uh, uh, ZFS on Linux. and uh, I'm going to talk about my ADB work on ZFS on Linux. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about what's the current issue on ZFS on Linux, and then I'll go through the design of my AD ABD, and I will show you some interesting result, and finally I'll go talk about some future works. Okay, so the current uh, memory model in ZFS is like this. So Linux has uh, linear space and virtual space. And linear space uh, usually go fragmented during, after uh, a period of time. And in ZFS, we require buffers uh, up to 128K or more. So uh, the linear space kind of uh, hard to satisfy, satisfy the, the requirement. So we need to go to uh, virtual memory, virtual space. However, uh, allocation from virtual space uh, is pretty slow in Linux. So uh, currently, we use lab allocator on top of virtual space to uh, speed out the allocation speed. The problem is that uh, uh, so we have double, double caching issue when, when memory mapping, uh, because in Linux, uh, it's used the uh, page cache system for memory mapping. However, our R cache is completely separated. And the second issue is slab fragmentation. And it caused uh, uh, memory waste. waste. And uh, also, uh, the additional slab layer, uh, it makes uh, memory reclamation uh, difficult. Uh, so currently, the arc limit is uh, limit to uh, uh, half of total memory to prevent uh, out of memory. So uh, the solution is uh, if we can use scatter scatter list. So as you can see from the picture, uh, we use uh, an array of uh, the scatter list structure, and so we have. A list, uh, uh, array of pointers points to scattered pages. So this way, we don't need to uh, have a linear address of buffer. And so we, we don't need to use virtual, uh, virtual address. And so we don't, have we don't need to go through slow uh, vmalloc so we can get rid of slab, uh, the slab layer. Uh, so uh, let's think about uh, implementing into the ZFS code. So uh, for Im implementing scatterlist for user data is uh, is easier because user data only access uh, when you are doing rewrite or in the I/O path. So the code is more contained and easier to modify. Uh, however, to implement scatterlist for metadata. Uh, there's a lot of uh, physical pointers point accessing the buffer. So every code pieces you are accessing the physical pointers, you need to modify that to, to change it to a scatterless compatible code. So that requires very much work and it's hard, very hard to make it, uh, make it correct. So uh, my approach is that uh, I use this APD structure, and I, uh, so I unify uh, both linear buffer and scatter buffer uh, under it. So we can use scatter buffer for the user data and use linear buffer for the metadata. So we don't have to, ch to, to change the, the code for the metadata. And 
So I also provide some APIs like copy uh, from ABD to uh, normal buffers like that. And I also provide iterators to walk through the scatter list. So uh, yeah. And the next problem is some, uh, some code is uh, hard to modify to accept uh, scatter list buffer, like uh, compression uh, and stuff. So for those kind of situations, uh, my approach is I temporarily allocate uh, normal buffers and I copy data uh, between, between ABDs and the buffer and I do the works, the real works on linear buffers. So here's an example. So we need to do decompression from this IO data to uh, data. So we uh, borrow a buffer one for the IO data and buffer two for the data. And I decompress the data on, uh, using the buff one and buff two. And after I finish, I return it, uh, meaning that I DLK the buffer and also copy the data back to the ABD. Yeah, so basically like, like that. Okay, so uh, earlier I said that because metadata using scatter ABD for metadata is, is pretty difficult. Uh, however, recently I do try to approach this problem, but this is experimental and not optimized. So my approach is that because there's, there's so many uh, metadata object types, so we try to uh, deal with one at a time. So I add a field in the DMU object table uh, to decide we want to use linear ABD or we want to use scatter ABD. And uh, for those physical pointers, we uh, directly assign the underlying uh, page address in the scatter list to the physical pointers. And also we, we need to uh, modify the code accessing the pointers. And currently I have done the denome block pointers and SPA history, those three types of uh, metadata type. Okay, so I'm going to show you some uh, interesting result. So I, I, uh, I set up uh, eight, eight, eight gigs of RAM and uh, a single pool, single disk pool, and I ran a uh, random read workload concurrently on a, a 4G file and a 4G Z file. And the arc, uh, arc size limit sets to 4G and 7G. And I lock the total system memory and usage and uh, target arc size and uh, arc size. Okay, so uh, here we, we show the result on uh, four, uh, 4G arc test. On the left side is the master branch and right side is the, my ADB branch. Uh, so as you can see, uh, they, they both start from cold cache and, and gradually go to the arc limit and levels out. However, here the dash line shows where the file I.O. ends. And uh, as you can see, on the master branch, the uh, total system memory start to go wild. Uh, but the actual arc size is, is still the same. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in the ABD branch, uh, the total system marriage is just is just horizontal. There's no much difference. Uh, so the the reason is that uh, in the in the master branch, because we have a, an additional slab layer, which is total uh, uh, total separate from our R cache. So we when we uh, when the R cache try to uh, reclaim the buffers of, uh, of the file data. The file data is on 128K slabs. So it reclaims a 128K buffer. It think it, it can allocate many uh, 8K blocks for the, for the Z volume. 
But in reality, because the 128K uh, buffer is reside in a slab, the slab cannot be reclaimed from, from the, the slab until the last, the last slot in the slab is also returned. So there's a discrepancy of how oxygen, how much is used, and the actual system usage. So you will see this, this, uh, this bump here. OK. Now, uh, this is the result when we set uh, oxides to 7G. Uh, here you also see they start from cold cache and grows up, gradually grows up. And the file L ends. Uh, it continues to grow until the 7, 7G mark. And you'll see uh, in ABD branch, it just go horizontal. However, in the, in the 7G result, you'll see this, uh, it falls down like that. Uh, so the issue is still the same in uh, 4, 4G circuits, uh, like the 4G cases. But because the total system memory is 8G, so the total system memory cannot go up. So at this time, the kernel feels the memory pressure is start to kick in and tells the arc that you need to free more memory. So you'll see that tar our target arc size goes down and our actual arc size goes down together. And here you'll, you'll really see performance impact. You'll see uh, the throughput of Z volume. On the left hand side, you'll see this uh, 25 megabytes per second. And on the right side is uh, 34 megabytes per second. So the master in the master branch is uh, uh, really uh, feeling the pressure. OK. So that's the, uh, the f for the future works. Uh, yeah. So uh, we need to uh, reduce the buffer, buffer borrowing. Because when we buffer, we, when we do uh, buffer borrowing from a scatter IBD, we need to copy data. So that would be extra overhead. And next, we need to enhance the metadata scatter code to make it more efficient and make it more uh, in enable to for more metadata types. And the last one is uh, integrate with uh, try to try to integrate with Linux page cache so we can solve the double caching for memory mapping issues. Okay, um, so uh, now I'll handle to Matt for. So uh, we're a little short on time, so I'll be I'll try to be brief. Um, we have uh, most, if not all, of the same problems uh, that David mentioned um, on Illumos as well. Um, if you've ever seen KMM Reap go completely insane, uh, that's uh, kind of the equivalent of what you're talking about, where it starts to have to evict things. It needs to change which KMM cache it wants to allocate from, so we have to reap stuff. Um, another problem is that the ZIO Arena, which is uh, the virtual memory, um, kernel virtual address space that we use to cache uh, stuff in the arc. It can get fragmented, and there's no real way to defragment it. Um, it leads to a bunch of the same issues that he mentioned. Um, so how are we going to get this working on, on Illumos? Uh, well, we'll just port David's code um, from Linux to Illumos. Um, we're going to, uh, we're, we're working, folks, with uh, Delphix and Accenta in collaboration with David on, um, on this. Um, okay, so how are we really going to do it? We, I mean, we're doing that, but there's a little bit more details to it. Um, so I've already ported um, an older version of David's code to Lumos. Um, it, it works. It works great. Um, you have to change, like, every single file. Uh, but, it, you know, once you've done that, everything's fine. Um, also, uh, I, on top of your work, I went and I changed all, basically, all of the variable names. So, like, instead, all, all the stuff that George just explained about buffers and whatnot is no longer true or is not going to be true anymore. It's all going to be, uh, a, what is it called, like a arc, instead of an arc buff, it's a, or arc buff data, it's an arc ABD. So it's like, and all those are pointers to ABDTs. Um, so basically like, you know, thousands of lines of code change in a very um, re simple, reputable, mechanical way that can be tested by uh, 
at least in large part, by the compiler um, because of changing the variable names and, and type safety. Uh, okay, so we need to um, look at porting some of your more recent stuff, um, like the scattered indirects. We also, we really, really need to make um, compression work on scattered buffs, at least um, LZ4 decompression from scattered, so that the um, compressed arc stuff that George mentioned, you know, we have to decompress data all the time. So we need to be able to store the decompressed data scattered and then um, do the decompression on that without having to like copy it uh, one more time. Um, and then lastly, we need to allocate, uh, integrate it with the Illumos VM subsystem. Uh, and also we want to look at, um, because of compressed arc, uh, we're able to, um, if data compresses to sizes that are not multiples of 4K, um, then uh, you might want to allocate memory that is not a multiple of 4K, uh, and, but pages are multiple of 4K. So uh, we want to look at, in addition to this, also being able to back small buffers with arrays of pointers to 512 byte Kim and Malik to chunks. Uh, okay. And um, we're looking at optimistically targeting, um, getting this out in April. Um, and uh, this is the code uh, that we have already ported to, um, to Illumos. Any questions? How much time? Oh, we, yeah. Maybe, maybe time for two questions. Uh, yes, that's the hard part. <laughs> um, so like the, uh, if you're just talking about data, uh, user data, not metadata, then um, the, like all of the hard stuff that David did was in the ZIO pipeline and in the ARC. Like the, most of the, all the other users, um, like once it's coming out of the ARC, then it's just like a, a pass through to everything else. So. Um, Yeah, I mean, that might be a nice simplification or like reduction of the sur surface of the changes, but it doesn't like make the problem fundamentally really any easier or harder, unfortunately. Any other questions? Yeah, so you could use that instead of instead of copying. Yes. We, we considered doing uh, that on the Lumos, yeah, uh, but the performance really sucks because of the um, TLB shoot down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in Linux, it's basically the same. Yeah, because the v, v, VM, VMAP or VM map is basically the VMALOC is the same thing, uh, except that in VMALOC you also allocate the, the pages. Yeah, so it's basically the same as you, you would use uh, vmalloc. You, you certainly tried that out and implement it as like another backend for um, borrowing a, uh, ABDs, uh, but the performance would probably be much worse than doing a kmalloc and bcopy because of the TLB shoot down. At least if you have like more than one vCPU. Okay, thank you. Um, up next, thank you guys.